Hello everyone, thank you very much for your time. My name is Charles Luke and I'm the manager of Murray Income Trust, which has just reached an important dividend milestone. Uh, the company has recently announced its fourth interim dividend for the year, ended June 2023 of 12.75 pence, which results in a total dividend for the year of 37.5 pence, which very significantly represents the 50th consecutive year of dividend increases for the company in what is also its centenary year since incorporation. Back in 1973, the company paid a dividend of 0.47 pence, uh, and it has increased every single year since, with, as I mentioned, a dividend of 37.5p for 2023. That represents an admirable compound annual growth rate of 9.2%. So I thought it might be interesting just to share some thoughts and perspectives about what is really quite an impressive achievement. I think there are perhaps three notable reasons that have helped the company achieve its milestone. Um, firstly, and I think importantly, although I've only managed the portfolio for 17 years, looking back at old annual reports before my time, the directors have uh, wisely ensured that the underlying investment theme has always been a focus on a diversified portfolio of strong, established blue chip companies, which have generally provided a reliable source of earnings uh, and dividend growth. Um, secondly, the weakness of sterling over the last 50 years has also been helpful for a dividend paid in pence, but with the portfolio generating a meaningful proportion of its income uh, overseas. For example, um, although it's been far from a smooth journey, in 1973 a dollar was worth around 40 pence, whereas today a dollar is worth around 80 pence. And finally, the investment trust structure has certainly been helpful. One of the benefits of investment trusts compared to open-ended funds is the ability to put money away in a revenue reserve for a rainy day, um, or perhaps three or four recessions, um, a global financial crisis or a pandemic. Uh, and over the last 50 years, the company has used its revenue reserve um, eight times. But to put that into some perspective, um, in very simple terms, in total, the company has paid out around 830 pence of dividends, of which just under 10 pence has come from the revenue reserve. So the directors have only had to use this very modestly. So looking forward to hopefully the next 50 years of dividend growth, the core investment proposition remains the same. It's a simple thesis, but if a company wants to grow its dividends over the long term, it needs to grow its earnings, and we think good quality companies are best placed to do that. So the portfolio is sticking to its knitting, investing in good quality companies with strong business models, robust balance sheets and experienced management teams capable of growing their uh, earnings and dividends over the long term. Uh, and dividend growth in some of the portfolio's largest holdings is very healthy. So looking at the last full year dividend increases, uh, Relex increased its dividend by 10%, Diageo by 5%, uh, Experian by 6%, London Stock Exchange by um, 12% and rent kill by 18%. No doubt there will be further challenges, but the revenue reserve stands at approximately 50% of the full year dividend. Um, and the company has the authority to pay a dividend out of capital if an extremely unlikely set of circumstances comes to pass. Um, overall, I'm very confident that the trust and the portfolio are in good shape to maintain the impressive long-term track record of dividend growth. Thank you for your time. For more information on Murray Income, please visit our website or click the link below.